Hello, I've been trying my best. It, should that just be the whole intro? Yeah, I know. I guess Kosho's been trying his best too. I've been trying my best to make my first YouTube video. It's very apparent uh, based on how long this has taken. It's literally taken me a little over a month to fully like film everything, flush things out. First part of the video, you'll kind of see me throw in some stuff. Actually, throughout most of the video, you'll see me throwing things. Um, not like physical objects, I should clarify that. I do pottery. I started doing pottery maybe like, I wanna say it's been about two years at this point now. So it's been, I started it during the pandemic. I can say that. Um, and yeah, I just, I wanted to document and share the process more so. Also so that I can start building up also so that I can start building up some more um, traction and you know be able to start selling my, my works so that this can be a more sustainable thing um, part-time for me. And yeah, I just wanted to share that process with you all. My name is Stephanie, by the way. I realized I never said that. My Instagram handle is stephboku.art. And yeah, if you're looking for just some cozy, artsy vibes, that was kind of what I was going for with this and likely what my whole channel is gonna be about uh, that and experimenting with other pottery or art. So I hope that y'all stick by and um, I'm excited to bring you along the process with me. Mwah. I don't know, that was not me. Anyway, bye. started working with porcelain I actually kind of hated it I found out that the reason why I hated working with porcelain so much is because I was trying to wrangle it with like all of my muscles and in reality the best thing that you can do with porcelain is be very gentle this porcelain is really cool because we have a pottery store named Georgie's and they have a really awesome low fire translucent porcelain so this guy actually gets translucent at cone six I believe it's the Silver Falls porcelain and it's just beautiful because it's so incredibly white when it's fired it is it almost looks like it has this glossy finish to it Let's see if I can build this one up. Usually when I try and make things tall, that's where things tend to go south. There's so many steps in pottery in which things can go south. First, it needs to survive throwing. I'm collaring it so weird. Please don't follow suit. Oh God, oh God. 
not enough slip, not enough slip. Yep, yep, okay. Then if it survives the first firing, you gotta glaze it. And like nine times out of ten, there's gonna be something. Honestly, more of the story is that pottery is, you know, it's supposed to be zen. And like so many people, oh. My point exactly. Let's see if I can try to save this actually. I've been having a lot of fun doing that lately because I, I follow this one guy on Instagram and one of his specialties that he shows on his reels is him being able to recover like a really messed up piece that usually you would just have to th like scrap. He's able to kind of manipulate it back into a spot where it can be stable. I don't know what I'm doing right now. It's kind of, something's happening. Oh boy, this is really taking an interesting form. Round two. Oh. I'm kind of impressed by that. Sponging up the water so it doesn't crack. Oh well. Love throwing. It's so relaxed. Okay. <gasps> yes. After trimming, I put it in the bisque fire, glazed it, and this is after it came out of the second firing. Isn't it beautiful? I'm so happy with how it turned out. And it's the perfect size for my ramen. Okay, bye.
cute this is. My mom made these little like bowl cozies so that you don't burn your hands when you take it out of the microwave. Thanks, mom. So I recently found out that I'm going to be, um, my stuff is going to be in a storefront called Jelly Cup Collective here in Portland. I'm getting ready to, to just make a ton of stock, um, get stuff together so that I can drop it off this week over there. Here is some of the stock that we're working with. I want to make a range of different price things, so I'm making some tiny bases. I made a little moon jar. Um, this little lumpy guy, which, uh, something that I'm discovering is <laughs> throwing stuff. Uh, throwing really tiny vases proved to be pretty difficult, so I've had a lot of oopsies. Like this guy. Um, but I'm also making, this is gonna be a little nutty comey dish. This looks like a crack, but it's just one of my dog's hairs. <laughs> He, he's put a little piece of himself in, in each of my my pieces just because his hair always ends up in here. But don't worry, it burns out. It's not going to be in the final product. Um, some other mini guys. This is actually for our household. I wanted to make a little jar or um, I wanted to make a little pitcher uh, just so that I can have it for like my tea, lemonade whatever else my heart desires with that and then um i put it on backwards actually there's little slots so that you can adjust accordingly if you want to strain out any tea leaves or have an open pour i also have these little guys that were meant to be kind of like shot glasses again we'll see if it shrinks enough where i can call it that uh, if anything, it'll be like a little hybrid of a teacup and a shot glass. I recently got the new Honey Flux, or Honey Dew Flux, which is different than Honey Flux, um, but it's part of the Amoco's new Flux line. I'm so excited. But I'm gonna try three heavy coats on this guy, and we'll see how it goes. This is my first time using it, um, and I'm so, so, so excited. I hope that it turns out okay. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Alright, this guy was the, co the Amico Cosmos. And as I've seen from all the other reviews, it is crawled so much. I hope I can pop that off. That sucks. And I see like the smallest little effect. I don't know if you can see that little star right there.
guys. I just spent like three hours painting everything. But we got a couple candle holders. These guys are gonna turn into magnets, all the flat ones. Some Calpico. And then little teacups. it's kind of crazy to look at side by side. I fired these differently just because I don't have kiln space. Uh, I got a tiny guy. It's we're the exact same size. Now you can see that this like fully fits in side. It has shrunk ever so slightly. Okay, second order of business is showing off how different the same glaive. Okay, bud. Sick. He's having the same dilemma. Well, anyway, <laughs> this guy, this is on porcelain, and this is what that turned out to look like. Versus this guy is on reclaim. You could see more of the blues came out. problems with my chartreuse underglaze. It tends to like, I don't know if you can see, it tends to bubble a little bit. Um, and I tried to apply it with a less heavy hand this time around, but you, cause you can kind of see how apparent it is on this one. It's still really cute. It just is making some unpredictable changes so something I've noticed it turned out okay on this guy though for the most part and these are all gonna be magnets these flat guys Yay. this is the cosmos glaze this is the new amico and just look at that it did some really cool patterns and there's like you can kind of see all of the oil slick and different textures Gorgeous. This is the spoon rest also for our household. was right after I set up my whole table for my stuff at the Jelly Cup Collective. If you're in the Portland area and want to see um, a shop that has all AAPI artists, um, please come and check it out. It's a really cool space um, and I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. This was the night before. The next day after this actually we had a big event where um, all the people who were part of this collective could come and mingle. There were people presenting on ways to help the API community continue to flourish and create more opportunity for artists um, and vendors to connect and that was really cool to be a part of. So thank you so much Jelly Cup Collective and Legendary Makers Market for hosting um, and sharing and allowing me to be a part of something so cool. Thank you. 